Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Kansas Speedway. We're under the lights here for race 24 of the Twiggy Air Racing Series season. I'm Carmen Sienna. Thank you all for joining us here this evening. Track conditions can't be much better than this for a wonderful Friday night of racing. Track temp and air temp, both 78 degrees. Very little wind, very little humidity. Very enjoyable on track as 18 drivers to try to make some inroads here in the final stanza of the season. Practice still ongoing for the next three minutes. Martin Roberg currently sitting top of the standings ahead of Eli Sasek and Jacob Elkins. A lot of progress being done. There's Elkins in pit lane. It looks like so is Roberg as well. Fastest car on the track at the moment is the 34 of Blowers. And you see 18 cars on track for tonight's event. Just Mariska Million currently 18th fastest. With some work to do in the number 44 for Watch Running Motorsports. Again, 18 cars tonight. Healthy sized field here at Kansas. A track pretty well renowned now for some of its racing. Progressive banking in the corners. That means you can run just as quick in the top lane as you can on the bottom. Top of personal preference. And figuring out where you want your car to be. Million finding that out now. Roberg has already found that out. He knows where he wants his car to be as he practices coming off of the corner. Let's looks like it's out of turn two for the 37. Fly leg zier. Running right now in the seventh position. Will also bail and will actually try to practice pit entry here. Something that cost her a chance at the victory a week ago at Dover. Yeah, Blower is sitting there in the eighth position. Alec Daffin, third place in the points. Right now, he's sitting in the tenth spot. Right behind Merrick Watchorn in the running order on the times. Entering tonight. Merrick Wachorn had a significant advantage on the championship running order. Wachorn just shy of 2,000 points ahead of Brennan Gregg, who was just under 1,500. Alec Daff in third place in points. Mariska Million fourth. Lilac here in fifth. That's how the top five in the championship standings look at the moment. It's been all about if someone can stop Merrick Wachorn, but both of them Looking a little bit slower here on track with about 20 seconds remaining here in practice. Like watch one was about to leave pit lane, uh, but with the time remaining, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense uh, to try to complete a lap here as qualifying gets set to begin. So he'll move back to pit lane and momentarily we will see practice begin or see qualifying begin here at Kansas. So who's it going to be that comes out of pit lane first? That's going to be the magical question, I think. So qualifying begins. First car is coming out on track will be that of Martin Roberg. Series rookie was the fastest in practice. Looking to take his first career pull in the series. He's got a little bit of work to do. Berberg in his seventh start tonight. Has a best starting position of fourth that happened in Nashville and a best finish of fourth that happened last week at Dover. 
So he's made some inroads. Very limited amount of time here in qualifying to make something happen. Roberg in the wall. He's in the fence. This lap's going to be no good. That puts him in trouble. Brennan Gregg up next. Jack Stanley also on track, as is Eli Sasek. Brennan Gregg's been so close to a win on three different occasions. Can he finally break through and get a win? Sasek goes provisionally top of the board. Watchorn goes top of the board. Greg goes third. Ellis fourth. Alkins third. As the times begin to come in, Brennan Gregg looking to improve. He needs to find about 15 hundredths of a second. Going to be hard to do. Can Greg make it across the line? Can he improve? He's sitting fourth at the moment. Was it an improvement? Not enough. Gained a little bit, gained three hundredths. Martin Roberg back on track. This is his last chance, his last lap. Where does it put him? It's not gonna be top of the board. It'll be ahead of Brennan Gregg though. Fourth place provisionally for the 37. Lilac Seer, her first lap was scratched. Can her second lap be better? 13 cars setting lap times. Cars yet to set a lap time. Hernandez, Daffin, Buchanan, Zier, who we're looking at right now, and Lily Frazier. Zier, second lap, fifth place for the Pennsylvania native. Daffin next up on the board. Five wins, all of them this season. Second place on that first lap. He's got an extra lap here in the tank. Can he take pole position away? Watchhorn currently sitting in row two. Unless Hernandez has something to say about it. Daffin running the outside lane. Seems more comfy out there. Plan it out of turn four. What does Daffin got? Was it an improvement? It was, but not enough to close into Elkins. Elkins had a 30.86. Daffin just seven hundredths shy of that. Hernandez, his first lap just completed there. You just saw him cross the line. Fifth fastest for him. He is in range if he can and he won't. Tag the wall and turns one and two. So he will stay fifth fastest. Fifth place for Patrick Hernandez as qualifying enters its final minute. It'll be Jacob Elkins, Alec Daffin, Bobby Flowers, and Merrick Watchhorn top four. So Elkins will take pole position. A good result in qualifying for him. A much needed result for him. So far this season, he has not finished. He's not started on the front row. In his best finish, a third at Iowa. He started third four times: Mid Ohio, Bristol, Martinsville, and Phoenix. So he's going to get a pole position here. But here's what's going to look like the full starting order. It's Elkins and Daffin front row ahead of Bobby Blowers and Merrick Watchorn. Patrick Hernandez sits in row three alongside Eli Sasek. Martin Roberg in row number four alongside Lilac Zier. Vernon Gregg and David Wright in row five ahead of Casey Ellis and Maurice Gamillion. Further on down the order here, the next three rows, Julian Ballou, haven't said his name yet. He is a debutant. First career start for Julian tonight. He starts 13th alongside Tristan Baer, 
Greg Piller and Jack Stanley in row eight, row nine, Lily Frazier and RJ Buchanan. They did not set lap times here tonight. So they will start from the back of the field. Again, one and a half mile track. Track temp still pristine. Wind is also pristine and the humidity can't get much better. Sight of 18 cars set to do battle tonight. And as we've seen that outside lane, preferred lane, but seems to be more difficult than what meets the eye. It's Elkins and Daffin at the front of the field. Again, the question all season long has been who can stop Merrick Watchorn? Watchorn qualified fourth place. He'll be outside row two. That may be a blessing for Watchorn if he's preferring the outside lane tonight. He has a straight access route to it. Elkins, likewise, looking to make some inroads in his championship battle as he tries to get into the top five. Just walking through things a little bit here. Elkins, this is his 43rd start. He's never started a pole position. And his only race win came last year at Las Vegas. In fact, all of his best finishes came last year. First in four second place finishes came last year. His best finish this year has been third, and that was at Iowa. He also got third at Atlanta and Texas. It's been a far cry, and he's got a battle with his teammate Chameleon and Lilac's ear for a top spot, five spot in the championship. So it's Elkins, Daffin, Hernandez, Watchorn. Looks like An issue possibly with Blowers. Blowers is not taking the green. So that moves up the 19 of Hernandez to row two. So make that three of the top four Watch Running Motorsports Toyota Camrys. New look for Elkins. As he leads the field to green, is that new look a good luck scheme? We're going to find out. The Great Plains 250 is underway. We're racing at Kansas. Watch one dropping back a little bit. Elkins and Hernandez made that inside line work. Daffin looks to the inside lane immediately, wants to take the race lead away. Who's going to lead across the line? It'll be Daffin for lap one. Elkins in the outside lane, same with Hernandez and Watchorn. Daffin makes a move to the outside lane as well, got clear of Elkins. Hernandez tagged the wall just a little bit, I think. I don't know, it might, might have been Daffin. Daffin got really slow down the back straightaway and allowed Elkins to get right back along through with Hernandez once again trying to make his way to second place. So Elkins leads the way over Daffin, Hernandez, and Watchorn staying put where he started. And Elkins actually going to take out the lane that Daffin was running to try to get around him the first time around. So some mirror driving early as the field fans out a little bit down the back straightaway. Great job so far by Elkins holding on to that race lead. Daffin led the first lap, but it's been Jacob Elkins since. Starting lap four. Keep an eye on Hernandez up two spots from where he started. Vernon Gregg up three spots. Jack Stanley up five. And RG Buchanan up four. Flowers is on track, but is three laps down. Elkins doing a really good job trying to now break away from the likes of Daffin. 
while Watchorn is stuck behind. Elkin just at the fast lap of the race, 31.2. See how much that falls as Watchorn tries to make the inside lane work side by side with his teammate there for third. Hernandez in the 19, Watchorn in the 91. Inside lane, you can make passes happen, but it wears the tires out quicker. Outside lane is more, it's better for the tires, but it's a little bit harder to maintain. As we're seeing some drivers already have trouble with that wall early on. But all three lanes from the outside, middle, and inside, all viable at various stages in this race. You'll see that across this 250-mile event tonight. One of the longer races on the calendar. But so far, so good. Alkins, dream start. Learning now there's a technical failure for, for Blowers who is one lap down, it's corrected his positioning, but he's gonna be hoping for a quick caution to get back in this fight. Otherwise, he's gonna be a lap down for a while in this race. Thing settling down at the front of the field. Elkins has opened up a 6 tenth gap over Daffin with Hernandez, Watchorn, and Sasek still staying in the top five. Vernon Gregg in sixth place, the tail end of this line is how they run currently. David Wright, seventh, on the heels of his best weekend on ABN television, third place last week at Dover in this series, and then turned on to get a win on Sunday at Richmond for the Arcs Ace Cup Series. So he is coming off of a euphoric high just a weekend ago. Seeing if he can replicate that. He's down in seventh place in that number 42 machine. Roberg, fastest in practice, couldn't make it happen in qualifying. He's trying to charge his way forward, see if he can show up some of that race pace that we saw in the hour-long practice session leading into tonight. He moves to the inside, trying to get around the 42 of David Wright. Lilac's here in ninth, just behind, and then Casey Ellis in tenth. Just following suit. Rounding out the top 10. Stanley, Ballou, Buchanan, Gamillion, Bayer, Pillar, and Frazier. The last car is on the lead lap. And then Flowers, he lapped down because of that technical issue that he had to get sorted at the start of the race. Elkins expanding his gap a little bit. Watchorn's gotten around his teammate in Hernandez, trying to waltz away while Brennan Gregg and Eli Sasek also try to find a way around Hernandez in the 19. It's Toyota's first, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. The only Chevrolet second place with Daffin, and then Ford seventh and eighth with Roberg and Zier. As we see this battle going on on track at the moment from third on down. Watchman would love to have a shot as Brennan Gregg in the wall. The 18 cars found the outside wall in turns one and two, and he'll drop a spot, and that was looks like it looks like it was Hernandez that also tied the wall. As Martin Roberg picks up another spot, make that another spot gain for the 37, who lost spots early in this race. He is just now getting that positive. Sasek makes his way around Hernandez, trying to clean up that pass. Looks like he will clear the 19 into turn one. Job done for the 71, who now sets his sights on that of Watchorn and Daffin. Elkins leads the way. Over Daffin, Watchorn, and Sasek, who still remains battling with Hernandez at this point. Roberg and Zier, sixth and seventh. Now 
But so far, 14 laps into it. It's been ideal for the Nina Elkins. Looking for his second career win in this series. Right now, he's sitting, he's losing a little bit of time here as Daffin and Watchern have both turned up the pace a little bit, trying to close in on the Nina Elkins. They've closed in the gap by half this lap alone, so Elkins must have missed his mark there a little bit in turns one and two. And now they are very close. The question remains now, once they get to him, how quickly can they get around him? Daffin thought he had it pretty well answered, but it all went asking just a lap later. That was at the very start of this race. And now Wachorn in pursuit. Wachorn has been the driver on a mission. 15 wins this season. It has been staggering. Eight wins in a row. Looking for nine wins in a row. If he can. At the front. Just in front of the points leader. It's Elkins and Daffin side by side. Down the back straight away in the three and the four. Daffin wants the race lead. Elkins trying to hold on to it. Watchorn seeing which lane prevails here. Because that's going to make his mind up a lot as far as how he handles this battle. Daffin led that lap, new leader. Is Daffin able to get clear? No, he cannot get clear. Down the back straightaway, Elkins will have a head of steam with help from his teammate. Daffin on the inside lane, trying to hold that white line. Now he's losing some time. Daffin gets clear. Watchorn will try to do the same. Watchorn had second at the line. He's level with Elkin or with, with uh, Daffin. So the inside lane not helping that 48 at all. He's set to lose a position. He was trying to go for the race lead. He'll now drop the third. And now the teammates will go at it. Watchorn to the inside lane. Daffin will stay up high behind Elkins. Elkins stays up high, obviously, trying to ride that wall a little bit. Watchorn tries to take the lead away, uses all of the apron, will lead that lap. New race leader. Now can he get clear of his teammate? He will once Elkins tags the wall, which he does. A gap in the armor allows Watchorn through, and now Daffin's going to struggle to try to get around Elkins, this time with haste. Battle for second heating up now as Watchorn finds himself in a very familiar position. So does Daffin and Elkins, and that is watching the 91 try to walk away. And for Daffin, it's got to be frustrating. He had the head start on that battle and lost it. Elkins trying to battle against Daffin still as Watchorn immediately opens up a 6-tenth gap. Eli Sasek sitting in fourth ahead of Hernandez, who rounds out the top five. One car out of this race early on, it's RJ Buchanan, the only Canadian in the field. Alkins holds on to second place. Davin had to give that spot up and fight for third with Sasek in tow now. Flower is still one lap down as the field fans itself out a little bit. You see the gap between first and seven and first and 16th is 15 seconds almost. Still a lot of battling going on. We'll kind of focus down outside the top five, just a smidge, a battle of four with Hernandez Roberg. Zier and Greg in this battle just off the top five. In fact, Hernandez is in fifth, so this will be a battle to get into the top five. Roberg sitting on your screen, that 37 machine was the fastest in practice. Coming off this best finish in the series, third place last uh, last week at Dover.
Burberry's still struggling to get around that 19. As Greg, who tagged the wall earlier, tries to get around Zero on the inside lane, it will not work. Zero holds on the outside lane. The full out of steam across the trioval. A little further back from that, you'll see a million four and a half seconds away in his own little zip code ahead of Casey Ellis, Jack Stanley, who's up five spots, the most spots gained in this race so far. David Wright slowly dropped back. Coming off the Fork High from the Cinderella weekend last weekend, there's Greg Curley in the 09. Lily Frazier in the 13th, hitting 14th. Julian Ballou, his first race, going through some teething pains, the number 20 machine. Riding around in 15th ahead of Tristan Bear. Tristan Bear driving a prime machine. Not in a prime real estate position right now, sitting 16th, last car on the lead lap. Daffin has gotten ahead of Elkins and has run away from Elkins. In the meantime, as we recover and battles throughout the field. As Elkins now under threat from Eli Sasek. Sasek goes through. Really good job by Sasek to make it into the podium places here early on. So Elkins down to fourth. Pulls that are off the podium places at the moment. Those tires struggling now on the nine machine. And this is a long race, 250 miles, 167 laps, and no stages. Unlike what we're going to be seeing here. Not only on Sunday, but soon to be on Mondays. Watch run leads, even still. So Watchorn leads this race. Had a Daffin, had a Sasek, had a Elkins and Hernandez top five still. Hernandez running on that top five, like his life depends on it. And he's trying to make it fourth. He's trying to have a little bit of cushion. He would love to have another really good finish this season. It's been a, a, a season of teething pains for the 19 Hernandez. Broberg in sixth, Greg seventh, Zier eighth, Gamillion ninth, Stanley in tenth. Is how things currently run. Stanley up six positions from where he started. Chipping away in familiar real estate. Lily Frazier in pit lane, the 13 car. Undergoing repair service. This is a 30 second stop and then some for the 13 of Frazier. And she will go laps down. There's the race leader, Merrick Watchorn. He's opened a two second gap. Where have we seen this before? Watch 
Watchorn leads the way ahead of Daphne and Sassic. Hernandez gets around Elkins. This battle for fourth place heating up. Ongoing fight. In the top five, as Elkins drops down further from the pole position in the lead of the race. Now out of the top five and struggling. He'll be freight trained here as Brennan Gregg goes through and Lilac Zero likely will do the same. So move Elkins down in a lap from fourth to eighth. Struggling in the number nine car. Roberg makes his way up to fourth here ahead of, ahead of Hernandez, who stays now in fifth. Watching Martin Roberg as he tries to pull away from Brennan Gregg and Lilac here. Hernandez has dropped back several spots he saw in that transaction. So Watcher New Motorsports inside of Merrick Watcher and it's seventh, eighth, and ninth for that team. With Hernandez, Elkins, and Gamillion. Uh Hernandez down two spots, Elkins down seven, Gamillion up three. So he's making inroads here. Jack Stanley's still the biggest gainer, then it's a tie between Greg Pillar and Brennan Gray. Four positions gained. Stanley, David Wright, Casey Ellis, Julian Ballou, and Tristan Bayer, top 15. Frazier, I believe, is out of this race after 30 laps. With Merrick Watchorn leading the way. I had a Daffin, Sasek, Martin Roberg, Brennan Gregg. Hernandez comes down pit lane, the 19 in. Down pit lane here for the 19. He'll go a lap down early, but he's gonna get off those tires early. Kind of committing himself to a, at least a three stop race. If not, maybe four. I would struggle to think like this, it shouldn't be a four stop race. This should be a pretty easy three stop race. If not two. You definitely want to try to call it as much time as possible. Making this on two stops, you just have to get to lap 56. I would imagine you'd want to make it at least a little bit close to that. 56 is the number that we want to see drivers make. Sear and Gamillion come in. So they're working on a three-stop strategy. There comes Watchorn. So I guess it is a three-stop strategy here tonight. Lap 42, Watchorn is in. So is Daffin, and so will Sasek and Roberg. 
It looks like most of the field comes in this time. So Hernandez and Elkins, pretty smart by getting an undercut here. We'll see how they get along. Hernandez ahead of Elkins here. Stanley stays out, so Stanley here and technically won't inherit the lead here. Ahead of David Wright and Julian Blue. See Jack Stanley come down pit lane here. Watcher and re-inherits the race lead ahead of Daffin and Hernandez with Roberg in fourth and Elkins in fifth. You see that battle there going on as Roberg gets extremely loose in front of Daffin and Greg, or ahead of Elkins and Greg, excuse me. Roberg trying to get back to the fourth spot. Alkins, Gray, Sasek, top seven. So you're just a little bit further behind this battle here. As Roberg in the wrong lane. Julian Blue in 10th place ahead of David Wright and Casey Ellis. It's been a phenomenal battle here in this mid pack. Greg trying to get up to the four, top four. As well as the guys Sasek, who lost a lot of time on pit lane. From third, he was down as far as eighth. So he had a really bad pit stop in that 71 machine. There's Sasek. Making his way into the top five again. Trying to challenge with Burning Gray. A phenomenal time so far, though, as these four really kind of duke it out for the top five honors.
and Sasek sitting now in the top five as everyone kind of spreads out a little bit here under this first run. We're over 50 laps in. It's been caution-free so far. While well, Merrick Watchorn leads the way. I'm going to take the time to invite you all in a couple weeks' time to the start of Season 4 for the HTL Cup Series season. Take a look at what's in store. Seems we're having a little bit of a technical issue with that at the moment, so stand by as we try to work on that. All right, now we'll try it again. We'll try to step aside for 90 seconds. A lot to come. Again, HTL Speed Weeks begins August 21st, 8 p.m. Monday nights are going to be a lot more interesting here on ABM. At the front of the field, trying to put cars lap down, is Merrick Watchhorn. In front of him is David Wright and Julian Ballou. Watchhorn and Daffin and Greg, top three. Hernandez in fourth ahead of Sasek. In fact, this battle for third ongoing. They're kind of showing all those in this battle at the moment. Hernandez gets the advantage ahead of Brennan Gregg momentarily. As they duke it out here at the front. For the podium place. There's Sasek and there's Roberg. Hernandez in the outside lane, battling there with Burning Greg. We're looking at a very firm three-stop strategy in tonight's event. Which kind of lets us know that in about 20 laps time, we'll see pit stops begin for the second time tonight. Hernandez and Greg in this ongoing duel. We've seen them battle so much so far already in this race. And we're not even to the halfway point yet.
Menendez falling now down behind Rodeberg. It is now Greg and Sasek going at it. Former teammates once upon a time. Greg, Sasek, and Roberg top five. Watch her and this long green flag run has already put up to ninth place, a lap down. Has not started on pole the last several races, but it has not mattered. He has been able to find his way to the front and make it happen. Been wild to see as Watchorn continues his domination of tonight's race. Watchorn leading the way. Sasek and Roberg going at it still behind Burning Greg. Battle between third, fourth, and fifth with Hernandez falling off the tail. Sasek doing what he can to try to get a positive result here tonight at Kansas. Been a wild month for Sasek. Started this Firecracker 400. We were this or really late last month. And that was a whirlwind of an adventure to follow Sasek along with. He's right ahead of Martin Roberg. Looking for another top five finish tonight here, the 37 machine. So far, seeing really well planted in that top five. 1.5 ahead of Hernandez. Traffic here. I believe that is the 35 of Ellis that everyone's getting around here. Robert tried to use him as a pick to make his way on through, and it did not work successfully. It will stay P5 behind Sasek. Sasek stays fourth. Greg in the last podium spot where he's been before. Fernandez Elkins outside the top five, sixth and seventh. Sierra in eighth. Mariska Million sitting a little bit more distant in the ninth position, but on the lead lap. He indeed is the last car to do so. He's got about six seconds in hand before he has to start worrying about his teammate lapping him here. I believe at that point pit stops will have begun for the second time tonight. We're about 10, 13 laps away from the second round of green flag pit stops. It's been caution free so far tonight. Very well and clean. As Merrick Watchhorn looks for his 16th win. He has been unstoppable tonight. Obviously, it doesn't take a lot of rocket science to do the math there. If he wins tonight, it's 16 wins and 24 starts. That is two thirds of the season so far that he's won. He 
He's been lights out incredible. Bayer in pit lane early. The 15 car makes an early stop. Oh, in trouble! Trouble! Sasek and Roberg cautions out. As the field has to scramble three, three, and four, Sasek and Roberg got together. And the caution comes out for the first time tonight on lap 72. An accident between Sasek and Martin Roberg. We'll see what happened here shortly. That changes a little bit. Here's what happened. Roberg had just gotten around Sasek. Very rough there. Looks well, like Roberg tried slowing down for the corner and, and Sasek just kind of ran through him. Let's see, we'll take an onboard look from Sasek's perspective. This is on board with Sasek. Looks to the outside. Saw a little bit of damage already on Roberg's right side. Looks like Rover was trying to cover him off. And Sasek just kind of ran him over there. So Sasek's going to come in. He's got a little bit of damage on that front right quarter panel. But most of the damage is being carried now by that 37, who's got some work to do. Now, this is interesting. Because a good chunk of the field came down pit lane here. Roberg went a lap down in that. Oh, wow. That's painful. Roberg went a lap down in that exchange. David Wright got the free pass. So, Roberg, Ballou, and Stanley all one lap down, as well as Casey Ellis and Greg Pillar. Lowers is now technically two laps down, unless he gets a wave around here. But with pit stops imminent. That's a risky game to play. That's a very risky game to play. Zero and Million in pit lane still getting repairs done on their cars under this caution, now that they've got the time to do so. Why not? Free real estate there. That's that's house money essentially. Borrowed time. Watchhorn, Daffin, Greg, Sasek, Hernandez, top five. So Zier and Gamillion exit pit lane with plenty of time to spare. Roberg, Blue, and all the lap cars. I was, I was going to say, the lap cars should come in here. It's not worth it to try to get a wave around at this stage and just end up having to pit and lose essentially an extra lap beyond that. So Roberg in even more trouble. Battling for the fourth spot, he's now down in tip. He is stuck a lap down. David Wright, the free pass recipient, who start the tail end of the field, but he will be on the lead lap. Now to give us nine cars on the lead lap here. Looks like Sasek might be going to the tail of the field here for his, his cause of that accident. We'll have to double check. He's on the apron as if he's indicating he is driving back here. So we'll keep an eye on that. He dropped behind Zier. I'm assuming he'll drop behind Gamillion too when, when Gamillion goes through here. That is the case. So, Sask will start this race to flip in the rear of the field for his cause of that accident. I guess he put his hand up there and admitted Ron doing there, so he will start from the back of the field. I think many would argue that's pretty fair handling of that situation. Although, I guess for Martin Roberts' case, he wouldn't lap down. He's probably still going to feel wronged on that.
Watchorn, Daffin, Greg, Hernandez, Zier. Top five for this first restart of the night on lap 76 is how this top five is ordered. Approaching the halfway point here in about 10 laps time. Yeah, and Daffin, Watchorn, Greg Hernandez. Watchorn chose the outside lane for this restart. He started on the outside lane, started in fourth place in this race, up to the race lead. Likes that outside lane, would like to keep it. Can't blame him. Daffin's a bit more versatile, used that inside lane for success early on. He's got some fresh tires, so he's got the ability to try to do that again. It could be a frantic restart here. Pace car is in to the restart zone. They go. Green flag is in the air, and away we go. We're racing once again at Kansas. Really good restart there by the teammates there, Watchorn and Hernandez. But Daffin, do not estimate, do not underestimate the 48 on fresh tires. He's going to try to take that lead early. Hernandez actually didn't stick behind Watchorn there on that initial start. Kind of floated back and forth. As Daffin tries to make something happen, Watchorn's gonna hold on to the race lead across the line. But Daffin trying to hold a candle to Watchorn, the points leader. Trying to apply pressures. Elkins makes his way back up to battle for third place along with his teammate Hernandez. Brennan Gregg there in the sixth position. You saw Martin Roberg, I believe. There's the 37. Fresh tires. Damage removed from his machine. And Roberg now trying to have to, essentially having to race to get his lap back here. Showing a lot of pace in the inside lane. That 37 car, that United Reynolds machine. First car off the lead lap and by a significant margin right now, Julian Ballou on his debut, trying to follow him forward there. Both of them are blue and white, mostly machines. I think Baloo's car got a little bit more red on it. But right now, Roberg showing his hand as far as the pace it's been in that number 37 Mustang all night long. Because unfortunately now he's a lap down and unable to really capitalize on these positions that he would otherwise be gaining as Roberg continues to send it down the inside lane. Roberg has been on a mission from the drop of the green flag. Driving a little bit of anger in the car as we cross lap 80. He's staying on the inside lane. That inside lane is hooked up for him. Getting right to the side of Daffin in one and two. And he's gonna continue to sail it in. This is wild stuff from the 37 of Roberg. May not be for a lot of position, but he is trying to get that lap back. And now it's it's gonna kind of worry Watchorn a little bit. Watchorn moves to defend that inside to the trioval. Won't dare do that in the corners because I think Daffin would 100% take, take advantage of that. But Roberg, hounding the points leader, hounding the race leader and really being a thorn in the side as he tries to race his lap back. He knows he's got the pace to do it. He is pressing that issue hard. And as frustrating as it can be for Daffin, there's not a whole lot he can do. And Roberg, to his credit, isn't using the traditional racing line that we're seeing the rest of the leaders use in the corner. So Daffin's got that real estate in the turns to try to make something happen. Just that Roberg 100% is an extra car that he would rather not deal with. Roberg hounding the race leader. He'll run the outside lane this time before pivoting to the inside. 
Seeing a line adjustment there by the 37. Wow. Watchorn blocked off that inside lane. I think he was trying to let Roper go, but that, mis that misdirection is going to allow Daffin into the race lead. That is wild stuff. Daff into the race lead with help of Martin Roberg, so I don't think he's complaining that much now about the 37. Now he's gotten to the point with Watchorn now in second, Hernandez third, Elkins fourth, then it's Greg and Sasek, Zier, Gamillion, David Wright, rest of the top nine that are on the lead lap. Based on that restart, Roberg 10th car, on lead lap. He is just out of the race leaders who are going to duke it out now. Now that we've crossed the halfway point in this race. Roberg has thrown a wrench into this one. And he's simply fighting for his race at the moment. Props to him for fighting the way he is. It has thrown all the leaders for a loop here. Daffin now in a really good spot leading this race. And for Watchorn, it's going to be frustrating because Roberg can easily just take up that lane that he's in right now. He's going back to the lead lap. He does not have to let the leaders go by, obviously, given how he charged through the field to begin with. But he, he is entitled to do what he's doing right now. As much as it's going to be begrudging to the race leaders, a tip of the hat to what Roebrook has done so far. Daffin leads still. Crucial laps led. I know it's a it's a drop in the bucket, a flash in the pan, and a day late in the dollar short as far as his championship ambitions so far. But what would that mean if he can at least get something out of this? has not won a race since Bristol back the beginning of June. It has been a long time. He would love to make it happen tonight. Watch one sails it to the inside lane. Just what Martin Roberg did on that initial restart. And he will slide up. As did Hernandez. Hernandez tied the wall. Daffin saw Watchorn slide up and decided he was gonna try to do the same thing. Although now he's on the inside lane. Watchhorn slowed up by Roberg. They're going to give each other no quarter here. Roberg, now the absolute perfect pick for whoever he decides to help. Watchhorn back to the lead of this race. But it has gotten a lot more tense at the front. Martin Roberg got loose. He'll go a lap down again. He got really loose out of four. And the Cinderella story comes to an end after a very impressive 13 lap run. Roberg will get around once again. We'll get around Elkins here. And so will Brennan Gray. Elkins uh, almost, I don't know if he tagged the wall or not, but he definitely looked like he got loose there through one and two. Now, can Watchorn set sail on Daffin again? Magical question, I think, being asked now. Watchorn, one stress free. Hernandez there sitting in third place, kind of. Sitting in wait, watching this all take place. Greg now in fourth, trying to set sail from Elkins, who is still behind Roberg. Sasek not far behind either, as Zier and David Wright duke it out for the seventh spot. Right in the 42, Zier in the 89. Last two cars on lead lap. They're comfortably on lead lap at this point in time.
been a crazy time here at Kansas, especially those last 15 laps. Hernandez under threat once again from Brennan Gregg. Is in third there still. We're gonna really light that position right back. Going further back is still this battle between David Wright and Lilac Zier. And then even further back from that is a battle between Greg Pillar and Jack Stanley, who is right technically in front of David Wright and Lilac Zier. So two battles on your screen, one a one lap down and one only lap. Front of the field is where the most important battles have been, though, with Brennan Gregg hounding the back of Hernandez. It has been phenomenal so far tonight. They're still hanging on in fourth place behind Hernandez with Watchorn and Daffin leading the way. Hawkins holding on to a top five at the moment ahead of Eli Sasek by a little over, or really a little under two seconds. Roper comes down pit lane. He tried his best to try to make it back on the lead lap, but now he's going to try something a little bit different here. Watchorn leads the way. He's up at a 1.3 second gap to Alec Daffin. Approaching the 100 lap mark in this race. So we're going to step aside to crank it up.
as you can hear on board Merrick Watchorn, some fuel saving going on here. As Watchorn has relinquished the race lead and is now dropped down to fourth, potentially fifth, with his teammate Jacob Elkins in tow. Daphne Hernandez in Greg, the top three, as Watchorn tries saving fuel. I'm assuming because they pit 10 laps before the estimated time or the estimated pit window is supposed to open. So I'm assuming Watchhorn is trying to stretch out this current pit window a little bit to avoid having to make a splash and dash theme of this race. Kind of an inverse of what we saw a week ago at Dover, where it was Watchhorn that was in the bad spot strategy-wise. Now Watchhorn trying to put himself to the good. So Watchorn down to fifth. Daffin leads this race. Hernandez second, then it's Greg and Elkins. And it's all spread out a little bit. Here in lap 108. Alec Daffin leads the way. And for those that are just now tuning in, I'm Carmen Siena, my co-commentator typically, Callie Height, not present tonight. But we're still here at Kansas, the 24th race of the season. As Daffin comes down pit lane, Daffin makes his stop. Hernandez stays out. And you hear Hernandez also grabbing the clutch here and coasting through the corners. Everyone trying to fuel save a little bit. Daffin not worried about that. He has, paid, he has made his bet. He's got a lie on it now. He knows he's got another stop to make, and that... Hitting on lap 110, that's 57 laps from here. So he knows the pit stop's coming. We'll see who's made a smart move here. You got drivers trying to fuel save, Brendan Gregg trying to fuel save. It looks like Elkins, the nine, is not. Watchorn is still trying to fuel save a little bit here. David Wright is not fuel saving. Hernandez and Elkins now lead the way as Elkins tries to save fuel. So will Hernandez, although Hernandez is not saving nearly as much. So very interesting strategy changes going on here. Daffin, again, he knows he's got a, an extra stop to make here. It's all about ex really maximizing pace here at this point in time. A caution now would ruin Daffin's race. A caution after these drivers have made their, la their their pit stop would probably save his race big time because it is a gamble that you really do not want to make. It's not really a gamble you want to make if you're Daffin or Hernandez or Elkins either. As you see, there's Daffin going through. And that is the 34 of Blowers as well, who actually tags the wall there. Watchon goes back to third ahead of Brennan Gregg. Yeah, Merrick Watchorn there sitting in third. Brennan Gregg in fourth. The pit stops in tow. We know we have another commercial break incoming. We're going to see how long this run on fuel lasts. For the race leaders, Hernandez still out by two seconds, looking for a second career win. Same with Elkins. 
What a season-defining race this could be if they could pull it off ahead of their teammate. Right now it's a 1-2-3 for Watcher and Motorsports. Their objective right now it really is to make it. You want to try to make it as close as you can to lap 127. That's another 12 laps. And that's going to be very hard to do. That's going to, be, that's going to require a lot of fuel saving across the entire remaining 52 laps of this race. And you see how quick Blowers is going. Blowers not really in contention for anything at this particular point in time. Blowers is two laps down. Now as he takes one of those laps back, he was three. Roberg two laps down as well, but Roberg also on an, uh, uh, an inverted strategy where he came in early. Nine cards on the lead lap with Daffin now sitting in ninth place trying to close that gap in. As obviously the top three all are uh, saving fuel to their heart's content. David Wright, not so keen on the fuel saving strategy. He been on lap 74. He been on the same laps as everybody else. And he is not so concerned about fuel saving at this point in time. He been on lap 74. So we're already on lap 43 of this run, technically. You see the race leaders, they're trying to make it to lap one, I would say, if you want to be generous, 124-ish is the lap they're trying to make here. David Wright, not worried about that at all, as he blows by two of the teammates there for Watch 20 Motorsports. And you see just how much difference in speed there is between those that are saving and those that aren't. David Wright not worried about fuel saving at all right now. He feels he can get close to that number without needing it. We are going to step aside though for our last commercial break for those watching live on Twitch, the embed ads will kind of kick click in and it will be the same for those that are subscribed to the channel as we preview an upcoming project coming up starting August 21st. But this will be again the last commercial break and then we'll be full coverage to the end. We are back here as we approach lap 123 of 167. Magic number was lap 124, we believed. And so far, we are close to that. Watch one in the race lead. Alex Affin, however, closing the gap even more. 5.7 seconds the gap. 
to Daffin and Watchhorn. Zero in pit lane, Greg in pit lane, Hernandez pit during the caution, or during the, the, the commercial break, I should say. Everyone at this point has made pit stops here. Three cars out of this race as Watchhorn comes in, Daffin takes the lead of this race. So this is going to be very, very, very interesting now. Watchhorn in pit lane. There's Watchhorn taking service. Number 91, 30 career wins, 15 this season, looking for number 16 tonight, if he can make it happen. But he's going to have a little bit of work to do. David Wright going through his trioval will take third place away. Alkins there in fourth, Watchhorn in fifth. Again, you look at those that I think are the safest at the moment. You look at Watchorn and Zier. Really, those two are the only two that made it close to the number that they needed to make. The objective, they, they, if Watchorn could have gone an extra lap longer, it would have been even more comfortable because that would have been 43 laps to the finish. But he's got to go 44 laps from here. And crucially, Daffin's got him by a lap. Watchhorn down in six. He's behind Zier. Now that is crucial. He is right behind Lilac Zier. Direct battle for position and could be a direct battle for the lead of this race once Daffin makes his final stop. So huge talking point right there. Right now, it's right now the battle for fifth place. But as things change, Hernandez has to do a little bit of fuel saving, as does David Wright. David Wright, penalty lap 121, so maybe he's in a similar boat. Elkins, penalty lap 120, so he may have to do a little fuel saving. David Wright did not fuel save at all and made it almost the same distance as Watchorn, so I'm not sure if David Wright actually has to do a lot of fuel saving here. Watchorn trying to get around Zier. Will do so for fifth place. We'll look at the pit strategy for all the top eight here. So you can get an idea as to what's going on. We'll actually kind of see if we can extend that down to, uh, to the top 10. Would love to see the top 10. There's the top 10 here. So Davin made it 36 laps. He's on 18 laps right now. But 36 was kind of where he stopped. He, he's gone 42 before. But 36 is where he stopped. So he pit early, knew he couldn't make it on fuel, couldn't make the number that he needed to. So he came in early, short pitted. And it's worked out. He's got a, a, a lap lead over Merrick Watchorn, his main rival at this point in time. Hernandez went 46 laps. Wright went 47. Elkins 47. Watchorn 50, 0 49. Then 47 to 47 for Gamillion and Sasek. That is very critical. So Hernandez went 46 laps. So he pit on lap 119. So, and he fuel saved and he's still two laps short. If he does that same fuel saving strategy, he's still short. Watchorn went 50 laps to make it to lap 123. He's gotta go, he's, you see Zier fuel saving a little bit. Watchorn should be good. He's got to go 44 laps here. He went 50. As he gets around, Daffin to get his lap back here. Daffin's already on 20 lap, 21 lap old tires. So he is on the downhill slide here. Not in an unfavorable position by any stretch of the imagination.
taking a watch running in, sitting in fifth place. Roberg in for his final stop. Gavin still leads. Gavin looking for his sixth career win. Watcher looking for his 31st. The battles are spread out. This has become a pure strategy gamble at this point in time. With Watchhorn having done the fuel saving number. Daffin trying to just outpace everybody here. And he's got the ability to. I wonder what Daffin's strategy is going to be here in this race at this time. With, with the laps ticking down, we're approaching 30 laps to go. When do you pit? When do you take the pit stop? Because you definitely can't make it. When do you make that pit stop? And do you take two tires on that pit stop? Do you take right side tires? Very important questions. I think if you pit it with enough time, you could. I think that'd be a very interesting call for Daffin. Pitting, taking two tires. Give yourself some extra grip here for what could be a final 20 lap run. You're not holding, you're not setting yourself for the full 15 seconds on pit lane. But you're not leaving yourself completely vulnerable to just a splash and dash and whatever that means, because Watchhorn's now 29 seconds so within the 30-second threshold. Very interesting strategies being played out here in this final stanza. Once again, a strategy game, like what it was at Dover before pit lane penalties kind of affected things. Watchhorn and Zier, fifth and sixth. They're the two that I think are the closest to being able to make it on fuel as things stand at the moment. A little bit of saving needed for Elkins, for Wright and Hernandez. Wright's an, Wright's an oddball to me because he didn't save at all in that last run before his pit stop. And he was only two laps away as Daffin comes in now. So Daffin's making his stop now, which I think is probably the safest move to make. Daffin coming in pit lane. Now the question is, is it fuel only or does it take tires with the stop? I would assume you'd want to take some tires, make advantage of the situation because you're going to have the advantage by about 20 laps. So Daffin will obviously give up the lead here. He will give up the top five, but will have a way better experience here. He takes, he takes four tires. Four tire stop there for Daffin with 27 laps to go when Hernandez crosses the line here. Daffin will leave pit lane. He's going to safely stay on the lead lap. So that's the biggest struggle over. And really, you have to look for it's really going to be 14 seconds, 15 seconds to watch Horn is what, he's, what is the gap we're going to be looking at here. As Hernandez tries doing his thing, he's got a fuel save as much as he can. And I don't think he is. David Wright could take a win here. David Wright's an interesting, interesting statistic. He's an anomaly so far in all of this because he almost did the same thing Watchhorn did with 
within two laps of that strategy call without saving. He didn't do any clutch coasting in that process. So he's an interesting character. If he wasn't doing the extreme fuel saving and he almost went the same length as Watchhorn, I feel like Wright's okay. I'm not gonna say great. <laughs> not gonna say great, but he should be okay. However, we're gonna keep an eye again, keep an eye on that 48 of Daffin because he is now on the hard charge trying to get back to the front of the field. He's here, Hernandez. He is clutching and coasting a little bit more now. This could really kind of play into the hands of David Wright, who obviously I don't think, is still not saving, I don't think. At least if he is saving, he's not having to do anything extreme. As we've crossed that 25 to go threshold here at Kansas. This has gotten exciting. Hernandez, Wright, Elkins, Watchhorn, and Zier top five. Daffin six, Gomillion, and Sasa glass cars on the lead lap. It is all shifted here in the Great Plains. Been phenomenal so far to watch. David Wright will close in dramatically here. Hernandez trying his best to save fuel. He'll move to the inside lane. David Wright, likewise. Just going to try to make his way through as quickly as possible on that 19 car. Elkins in third, Watchorn in fourth. David Wright pacing himself a little bit here. He's going to have a really good exit out of turn four. Trying to go to the lead of this race. He'll succeed in that. New race leader, David Wright. Merrick Watchorn. Is it really, this battle, this battle with the top four is all within two seconds. And Zier's not far behind it either. And Watchorn's got to go through both his teammates here. He's got to go through Elkins, who's in an interesting spot. And he's got to go through Hernandez. As David Wright tries to pull away, he will pull away here. He is trying to set sail. Watchorn trying to get it through as well. Three teammates. Hernandez saving fuel. He's trying to make it to the end of the race without having to make a stop. Elkins feels like he's safe enough. We'll find out if he is or not. And Merrick Watchorn, probably the safest of the bunch. Now getting up to second place. But Daffin is in tow. Fresh tires in that 48 car. He is only, he is less than 10 seconds away from David Wright. And he is hard charging. His last lap, 31.5, 32s and 33s for the rest of the field. So yeah, Alec Daffin's charging forward. 21 laps to go. Watchorn knows that he has to move too. He's got to do something to try to cover off Daffin because Daffin has been blisteringly quick. 20 laps to go. 32.7 for Watchorn that time by. 33.1 for David Wright. 31.8 for Daffin. So almost a full second quicker that time than Watchorn. And Watchorn is boogieing. He's trying. Gap is now less than seven seconds between first and sixth. Hernandez gets around Elkins. That's about up a third. Holds on to the race lead, 18 to go, but that gap now is less than three tenths of a second. David Wright moves to the inside lane through one and two. Watchhorn goes up top. As these two battle again, keep an eye on this battle. Elkins now down to fifth. The 
this has been a very fascinating battle, a very fascinating strategy call throughout the top five. As Caution's come out, Caution's come out, Sasek! And I believe that was the 09 a pillar, and that changes everything. Who had the race lead at the time of Caution? Looks like David Wright did. And that changes everything. Second Caution of the night was 17 to go. Sasek once again. Only this time it seems to be a lot more serious for both drivers involved, Pillar and Pit Lane. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Crazy stuff. What happened here? This is between Greg Pillar and Eli Sasek. Take a look. Oh, wow. I don't know what that was for. Sasek was on the lead lap. Pillar wasn't. See if we can back it up any. Because I don't know what happened to cause that with Pillar. This is Sasek running up to Pillar. And we don't have any interaction before this between them. Sasek coming up. No contact there. Pillar just ran into Sasek. Just ran right into him. Kind of almost as silly as what Sasek did to, uh... Oh, a huge axe! And that's Daffin! That's Daffin involved! Oh, no! Oh, no! This is Greg Pillar. And he doesn't hold the brake. He doesn't hold the brake. Rookie mistake uh, piled on with another even more serious rookie mistake by Greg Pillar. Oh no. That is a grave error. Holy cow. So Daffin's gonna come down pit lane here with 14 to go. We're gonna step aside again, one last break real quick. It's a drink break for us. For you, it's a chance again to see what's coming up here in a couple weeks time, August 21st.
mark your calendars. August 21st, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the HTL Season 4 Speed Weeks beginning at New Smyrna. But we've got a finish of a race here. Never get the cover. It is David Wright, Merrick Watchorn, Lilac Zero, Patrick Hernandez, Maurice Gamillion, Alec Daffin, and Brennan Gregg at the front of the field to settle it all to the restart zone. And away we go. Really good start there by David Wright. And again, fresh tires, equal footing for everyone here on the lead lap to duke this out across the next 12 laps. Two cautions all night long. Four cars firmly in contention. Watchhorn, Wright, Hernandez, and Zier. Tire saving way less of a factor. Watchhorn clears, moves up. Does David Wright have anything? Lilac Sear spins. She goes to the infield grass. Her challenge for the race lead comes to a premature end. Watchhorn and David Wright. Does the Cinderella story continue for David Wright? He won on Sunday in the A Square Cup Series for Arx to lock himself into the A Square Cup Series playoffs. He finished third last Friday, a week ago, at Dover in this series. Hernandez trying to fight for it as well. Hernandez, we know, has pace on the short runs. Watch one up near the wall. As close as you can get it up there in one and two. Daffin up to fourth. But he is going to be irate with how this race has turned out. Very similar to how Michigan went for him. Hernandez up to second place. He got ahead of right. But they're going to duke it out here. Teammates one and two for Watchorn and Hernandez. With David Wright third, Daffin fourth, Gamillion fifth. Then Greg and Zier, last car is on the lead lap. Sasek first car, one lap down. In fact, you see Sasek, that sky blue and black car. That Ascent Racing Machine, number 71. First car lap down in case something happens. Coming to eight laps to go. Still very much anyone's game. Watch one is led. You could argue the most laps in this race. Side by side for second place still as they both close in on Watchorn here. Hernandez looking for his first win since Talladega last year. David Wright still new to this series. Again, talked about his accolades, especially his last seven days, has been impeccable. What can he do here? Alec Daffin back in this fight as well. He started this race in seventh place. He's back up to the top four and on the tail. Is that car wounded? Don't have a really good angle here. Down the front straightaway, that car does look clean. It looks like that fast pair may have been used at the right time, but Daffin's got work to do still if he wants to try to come from behind to win this one. David Wright still battling with Hernandez. Hernandez is going to give everything he's got to Watchorn. Everyone wants to end Watchorn's win streak. He's got eight wins in a row, trying to make it nine tonight. And it seemed like it was all under threat. Watchhorn covers the inside lane. Hernandez goes high. As they come to five laps to go. Can anyone stop Merrick Watchhorn is the brilliant question tonight. There is not a lot of laps left to figure this one out. Daffin is stalled behind the top three. At this point, I think he's kind of just, I think third is his best bet at this point in time. Watchhorn stays bottom three, three, and four this time. Hernandez stays up top. Hernandez will get a decent run here out of the turn four banking. Running right to the bumper of Watchhorn. Watchorn goes bottom again. Didn't have much of a choice there because Hernandez was going to push him to the corner. To the outside. Side by side for the race lead. 
Hernandez with the race lead down the back straight away, and he clears Watchorn. And he stays up top. Coming at three laps to go here at Kansas. Hernandez looking for something special. Four and a half miles left to play. David Wright trying, to best, trying his best to hold on for another podium. Teammates first and second. Trying to duke this one out for a race win. Hernandez has been lights out this entire last stanza. Two laps to go at the line. Hernandez and Watchorn. Once again, nose to tail, Supra and Supra. As David Wright continues to defend from Alec Daffod, he's got to hold on for another two miles. Coming to the white flag. One lap to go here at Kansas. Does the winless streak end? Hernandez trying to defend from Watchorn, who sends it on the inside lane. They stay side by side in three and four. Here they come. Daffin tagged the outside wall, but still made the pass. On David Wright. It's gonna be a drag race to the finish. Hernandez and Watchhorn side by side. But Hernandez wins at Kansas. Daffin finishes third. David Wright finishes fourth. Gamillion in fifth. But Hernandez will return to victory lane tonight. The, the dominant streak has come to an end. Second career win for Patrick Hernandez. It has been on again, off again, as far as pace has been concerned for the 19 car of Patrick Hernandez. But tonight, it was lights out pace for the 19. And when it mattered the most, he shined. Patrick Hernandez, race winner tonight at Kansas, his second career win. You're going to see this graphic on your screen. We'll have to update it after this race. No longer just one time winner. Make that a second win for the Texas native. Wild stuff tonight. Hernandez victorious here at Kansas. I had Americ Watchhorn and Alec Daffin. What a fight to the finish. Austin is going to celebrate here a little bit. Watchhorn, obviously teammates there with Hernandez. Watchhorn gave it his all to try to win that race. Just wasn't enough quite there for Merrick Watchhorn, he was so close to it. And this could be how this season begins to shape up. Next week, they go from Kansas to Chicagoland. Another track that is going to be thrilling. These intermediates have been the bread and butter for just about every series we broadcast. And uh, it is not, uh, not going to be the exception here tonight. It was fantastic when HTL ran here. At Chicago Land, it was fantastic when ABN Champ Car went to Chicago Land. Phenomenal intermediate coming up there in just seven days' time as Hernandez will go and do a Polish victory lap. It looks like here, celebrating a race win. Phenomenal job. It looks like Hernandez will just do a half Polish victory lap before turning right back around here. It looks like you might be celebrating a little bit more. But a phenomenal job. Felt like it was a long time coming from Hernandez, who had some decent results coming into tonight's race. Sat seventh in points going into the night. Had a third place finish at Motegi. That was really kind of what kind of lit up the fact that Hernandez had some pace there. 
fourth place at Las Vegas, sixth place at Kentucky, Texas. So it was coming. He's got some good results in his intermediate tracks. Doesn't matter if it's a traditional intermediate, like obviously tonight here at Kansas, or if it was more obtuse, like Motegi. Hernandez had has the pace, and we saw that tonight. And we, we saw that throughout the season. He's got a pole position already. He had pole position at Texas. He qualified second at Dover in Kentucky and Atlanta. Third at Motegi. So he had a he had a really good car tonight. And obviously it paid out really well for him. We'll talk to Merrick Watcher in second place finisher first. And then we'll talk to the race winner, Patrick Hernandez, here in just a second. Really good race for both of them. And we'll hear what Merrick has to say. Obviously his first loss since the beginning of June. Merrick, this is Carmen from the ABM booth. You got a copy? Well, the, the the dominant streak comes to an end, and it comes to an end thanks to your teammate. But what a performance tonight. You had the strategy call. It looks like pretty well set up and correct. Got the race lead. And then that caution came out and changed everything. Kind of just walk us through that entire second half of the race and how that all kind of laid out for you. I could run any line I want so I just I felt stronger on the bottom uh, towards that last stent so I, I decided to stay with it and kind of stick to it because how I was using my tires and how aggressive I was being I wasn't really expecting the tire I, I, you know the fall off to be that quick I was kind of expecting me to edge him out but when we went into three I just I hit that white line and I just got a little loose and a little tight all at the exact same time and kind of just slid up the, up the track Obviously, it, it, the second place, not the same as a race win. Your win streak of eight races comes to an end tonight. But how, how, how important, I guess, does it soften the blow knowing that it was to a teammate tonight? That it was Hernandez getting his first one of the season. His first one in almost a year uh, tonight here. Was, it, was, that, was there anything, is there any consolation in that? And obviously, how does it feel? I was seeing that one too. And obviously, with you not being at the one here, how much is that as far as like morale for the team? Uh, bolster things oh you, i mean it, it was a fantastic feeling i didn't really you know i came in here knowing i was going to have a strong car i knew i was going to be up front i just you know because kansas is just one of those mile and a half tracks it's just kind of in my repertoire of being able to just drive really well um if it went you know green to the end and we didn't have a caution that was good but yeah no to have uh to have patrick win it out and just really show some pure dominance he was up front all night long i mean he had the lead if he just saved fuel he probably would have made it to the end just like the rest of us um he got lucky with that caution so that really set him up and uh, on that last pit stops um i i felt good with my tires because i didn't use them up too much so i was saving myself so i only took right sides when i came out of pit road so i mean coming out of there was just right size he took four and i just you know i gambled and i just said hey i'm gonna try this and see i mean it worked but after we got past the five lap cliff i just felt like the right side started to get tight and he started hanging on my right rear and then you know the rest is history we had a you know one hell of a finish going side by side at the end so if patrick won or alec won or whoever won i wasn't really going to be too upset about it because you know, like I said last week, sooner or later my win streak and you know the the fall rate is going to happen sooner or later. So um, I'm happy that me and my team went one and two, and it was a fantastic feeling. Now we just gotta keep this pace up. You know, still the points leader at the end of the day, so it's going to be a great feeling moving forward. Absolutely, and obviously with Chicago Land next week, it's going to be a little bit more of the same as far as the action we saw tonight. A phenomenal race, nonetheless, here at Kansas tonight. Obviously, before we let you go, before we talk to your teammate. Uh, here in just a second. If there's anyone to shout out and say thank you to, Merrick, the floor is yours. Congratulations on yet another podium. The podium streak continues 400% and extending that points lead. Yeah, now I want to give a shout out to uh, Twiggy. Uh, give a shout out to QSA, Capture the Occasion. want to give a big shout out to y'all, of course, for always showing us week in and week out and give us the love and deserve we we do own and earn every week in and week out. Give a shout out to my team, and my my driver getting his first win of the season it's a great feeling knowing that he was going to have it and going forward with that so it's one of those things and hopefully we can just you know go about it from there um and just want to shout out to my family my friends and you know all my loved ones and my girl back home you know it's her birthday next week so hopefully i'll be able to celebrate with her when she gets back 
Absolutely. Merrick, again, congratulations. Second place, part of a 1-2 finish for Watch Running Motorsports tonight. Enjoy the podium, and we'll be seeing you here very shortly in Chicagoland. Yep. Thanks, Carmen. That was Merrick Watchhorn, second place finisher tonight. Not, not, it's been a while since we had to say that. All the way back to June 2nd for Merrick Watchhorn. But here we'll talk to the driver of the hour. We'll talk to Patrick Hernandez, race winner tonight here at Kansas. Patrick, this is Carmen from the ABN booth. Get a copy. Loud and clear. What a drive. Obviously... It felt like a long time coming. That podium at Mosegi kind of set things up for you as far as how everyone sort of saw you, especially in these intermediate tracks. And your track record showed it. Tonight, you showed it once again, blistering pace when it mattered the most and a race win for the first time since Talladega last year. First of all, how are you feeling getting that, finally getting that monkey off your back and getting a race win this season? And how is it battling with obviously your teammate, but obviously everyone there on that final 13 lap stanza? Man, uh... First of all, uh, I feel relieved, you know, uh, this season has been frustrating uh, all from the start of the season, you know, a lot of lows. Uh, there have been some races that have good pace, but, you know, I wasn't able to have a perfect execution. And that's something that I needed to clean up, you know, at Dover last week, I had second, uh, the second place on the bag and a mistake on, on the last pit stop. I had to come through because I speed on pit road. So, and at Texas and all the race that I had the speed, I have what it takes to, to win the race, but bad execution, you know, you know, f failing at the small things just, uh, prevent me from, from getting, from getting a good finish. Uh, those last 13 laps, I don't know, but, uh, I was trying by any means necessary, go to the front and, and I didn't care if I hit the wall, if I wrecked the car. I didn't. I didn't care. I I just went for it, and thankfully the car stayed with with enough grip to to make it possible. Uh, that's that last lap when Merrick dived to the bottom on, on turn one. I said, uh, uh, not tonight. I'm not gonna be denied. I'm tired of finishing second behind Merrick. So, uh, yeah, uh, I almost hit the wall exiting turn two, but I I had to do it, you know. Uh, but again, uh, I'm so happy. For myself for getting my first win of the season i'm so happy for the team for giving me the patience you know we've been working hard all season to fine tune those those little those little things that i'm failing and i think t tonight paid off and obviously chicagoland next week is going to be even more of the same another intermediate track again we've seen how strong you are on these one and a half mile tracks doesn't matter if it's like what we saw tonight and what we'll see next week or like motegi which is a lot different You've been able to shine. You've been able to show out. Obviously, your pole position at Texas, another indicator of that pace. Do you think you can kind of come back and do this again in seven days, uh, given some of the pace that you obviously you found tonight and some of the things that just kind of clicked tonight for you? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm taking one race at a time. Uh, I will have to do my home work for, for Chicago line. I struggle in this car, so uh, I will have to start doing some laps early, you know, uh, getting uh, – uh, getting to 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 fine tune the track um, early because uh, again I I struggle there so um, I don't know I'm gonna give my best effort like like every week and I hope I can claim another victory. Well tonight it worked out dividends for you here tonight and the base motivator is victory and you got there tonight race winner tonight here Patrick Hernandez before I let you go and let you enjoy your race win this weekend. If there's anyone to shout out and say thank you to Patrick, the floor is yours. Congratulations. Your first one of the season. Very well earned. Job well done. Thank you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my team. Watch your e motorsport. Uh, they've been there for me uh, uh, all this season, you know, with words of encouragement, uh, giving me tips. You know, we, we've been working hard as a team to, uh, to try to be the best drivers that that we can be and and this win is is thanks to them so i want to give a shout out to all the guys back in the team for giving me such a rocket car tonight uh when i give a shout out to every single member of this league because thanks to them this league has a has a nice group of guys to race uh i also want to give a shout out uh, to you for such awesome broadcast and and yeah that's uh, that's all <laughs> 
Patrick, again, phenomenal job with race win. It felt like a long time coming, and you finally got it here at Kansas. Congratulations on the race win. A very well-earned job. Enjoy the race win. We'll be seeing you next week at Chicagoland. Enjoy it. Thank you. That was Patrick Hernandez, race winner tonight. Obviously, you can hear the relief in his voice, getting that off his shoulders. So much time going into trying to get into the winner's circle here once again. And he's done it here tonight at Kansas. A well, job well done for Hernandez here this evening. As we look into it here, here is the full race results. As they run all 18 cars on your screen, as they ran, Patrick Hernandez, race winner here tonight for Washington Motorsports. A 1-2 for the team. Alec Daffin recovering from a, to a third-place finish after being taken out 15 laps from the end of the race. David Wright finished fourth, so close to a, another podium in a row, having to settle for fourth place. Not a bad effort for David Wright at all. Maurice Gamillion finishing top five for Washington Motorsports. So Washington Motorsports, another fantastic night for that team. Brennan Gregg in sixth. I had a lilacs here. And Eli Sasek, who finished first car one lap down after being taken out by Greg Pillar there uh, on that last caution. Jack Stanley, ninth place for him. A good result here at Kansas for the 95 machine. Martin Roberg in 10th ahead of Julian Ballou, his debut. He was one lap down, but very quiet, very calm, very clean race for the debutant. Bobby Blowers finished in 12th ahead of Jacob Elkins. Greg Pillar, he was involved in that last accident. Uh, ended up 19 laps down from the finish. Did not finish the race. Neither did Elkins, who was collected in that accident. Casey Ellis retired, 94 laps from the finish. Tristan Bayer, 98 laps from the finish for him. Lily Frazier only completed 30 laps, and RG Buchanan only finished 10 laps tonight. What a drive here this evening for the crew for the Turkey Racing Series. It's been phenomenal. Great job across the board. Patrick Hernandez, the race winner tonight. We are live tomorrow night. I think we might have a double feature. We have OAP season finale at Homestead, and then the start of the ARC Saturday Night Showdown series at Daytona. So there may be a lot of action going on here this weekend. And then obviously on Sunday, it's Michigan for the ARC Face for a Cup series with four races to go in the regular season. A lot of stuff coming up here over the next couple days. Stay in tune, stay following our, our our Twitter or our Instagram. All of the information that you need to be seeing is on our social media handles there. But on behalf of everyone here for the Twiggy Racing Series and all of its partners and everyone here at ABN Studios, I'm Carmen Siena. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, have some fun this weekend, and we'll see you tomorrow night for a crazy night of racing. Until then, so long, everybody.